The conditions remain absolutely brutal out here. It's very, very hot today, about 105 degrees. I want to show you something behind me. You can see these firefighters behind. They're, they're putting out hot spots because of the potential for more winds tonight. They're concerned that you might have some, uh, some flying debris that could catch other homes in this subdivision on fire. This is the Lake Redland Estates subdivision, which absolutely got decimated uh, by this fire. Uh, so that just tells you about the ongoing concern that, that crews have out here, that there could be more fires, even in a neighborhood where the fire has already passed through. So the red flag warning remains in effect at least until uh, tomorrow morning. The bottom line here, Fred, is really there's no end in sight with these conditions. And in a lot of ways, this, this region feels like it's paralyzed with so many people, thousands of people under this evacuation order. You can't get a hotel room in the area. A lot of the evacuation centers are at maximum capacity as well. And so folks obviously want things to end. But uh, really, uh, what crews are saying is that with these conditions, they just don't know when they'll be able to get this fire under control, mm -hmm. Fred. And then, Dan, you've got crews behind you there, you know, uh, you know, trying to douse these hot spots or potential hot spots. But in general, what, what are the kinds of resources that these firefighters need uh, to try to contain more and to keep themselves safe? Well, there's really only so much they can do. At this point, this fire is 5% contained. A lot of this just depends on the weather uh, and particularly the wind. Uh, there are a number of firefighters out here. I mean, 3,500 uh, have been assigned to it. And of course, you have a lot of aircraft that are dousing uh, the flames uh, when they see them erupt. But uh, really, it just comes down to, uh, to Mother Nature and the weather cooperating. Obviously, they're trying to do the best they can uh, to put out uh, hot spots when they see them, to put out the flames. You have the hot shot crews uh, trying to build containment lines. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, is these conditions remain fierce because we're talking about you know, bone dry conditions and heat. And so no matter how many firefighters you throw at this thing, uh, the challenges remain. Mm. And then, Dan, this uh, car fire is just one of several uh, wildfires there in that state. You know, what are the distinctions? Or are they all kind of, you know, uh, you know, morphing together or are they still staying relatively separate? The fires are, are separate. You're right. There are a number of fires burning in California and across uh, the West Coast. And so really it's up to uh, the regional crews, regional management crews to determine how many firefighters they want to throw at any particular fire. This is really the worst one in the state. Matter of fact, this fire already uh, ranks among the, the, tw the top 20 destructive fires in, in California history. Uh, so this is already a historic wildfire with more than 500 uh, structures burned. And uh, once again, who knows how long this is going to go on for. Yeah. All right, Dan Simon, thank you so much. So at least three police officers have lost their homes in that fire near Redding. And one of them is Redding's police chief, Roger Moore, who is joining me right now on the phone. Uh, so Chief Moore, um, how are you and your family holding up knowing that you've lost your home? Hi, thank you. Um, you know, we're doing good. Um, we are doing better than uh, many. Um, we have over 517 homes that were lost. So many people are displaced here in the city of Reading. Um, as far as my family and I, we are safe and property can be replaced. Um, I know it displaces us a little bit, but um, with the loss of uh, the two firefighters and our citizens, um, it pales in comparison. So, Chief, what were the moments like before losing your home? Uh, were, you know, your family members, you, you at the house? Uh, you know, did you have to evacuate? What, what were the circumstances? Yeah, so the fire made an incredible run from our Whiskey Town National Park area on Wednesday, almost touching our city. So Thursday, we were getting ready for evacuations. Um, the winds kicked up like we had spoken about, and these gale force type winds, um, it created these fire tornadoes. So I was actually sitting in my subdivision monitoring it. I had gotten my family out, and I watched it go completely north through the uh, Lake Redding subdivision, which my father's home also was burned, um, up to my neighborhood and then take out many, many neighborhoods that evening. And that was the worst of it as far as the city goes. But this, this fire is unpredictable. It's going in many, many different directions and it's very hard to predict. Mm. Uh, and, and thank goodness that your family members, you know, and you are okay. Uh, but talk to me about what this is like now. Um, you know, you, you usually respond um, and you're continuing to responding to emergencies, but now you 
are, you know, straddling both those worlds. Uh, now that you all have been victimized like this, describe for me, if you can, what this feels like for you. Well, uh, of course, we, you know, we signed up to continue working through disasters. So um, my family has good support here. Um, I will continue to remain on duty with my personnel. And I can tell you that it's been overwhelming support from OES and CAL FIRE, National Guard, all the highway patrolmen, all our law enforcement officers, and all of our volunteers. Our city is really coming together to give food, stand up shelters. And so we just, we carry on and we'll get through this. Um, the fire right now is still moving uh, west and south. And so they're trying to get a containment line on that. But it is a giant fire, and it's going to require a lot of resources because of the winds. Mm. Mm. Well, we wish you and your family the best, and, of course, uh, also counting the blessings uh, that you are all very safe. Redding, California Police Chief Roger Moore, thank you so much.